Hello everyone and welcome to a more casual rules update video. We are about to uh, roll out some kind of major changes to uh, to some of the rules and I wanted to make this video to kind of explain why we're making these changes and also some of the uh, intention behind them and how they're intended to be to be used and interpreted. Uh, so let's just let's get into it. Now there's going to be two uh, different parts of this video. The first one is talking about a change that we're making to farm hands and uh, automatic plant farms, XP farms, basically we're removing them, we'll get to that. Um, and the other change is to uh, the another aspect of the server, wars. And we are totally revamping how wars work. Oh, how wars work. Um, so let's get into it. Okay, here we are on the rules and we're just gonna kind of read these together and talk about them together. So the first rule that we're adding is uh, this one here, it's in general, uh, 11. Farmhand hiring is restricted to 20 units per build. Additionally, farmhands may not be used for the primary purpose of generating XP. Basically, what that means is if you have a big farm uh, that that just exists to get you XP, that is no longer allowed. Um, this is a very common thing with corn farms. And now I know a lot of you uh, have been expecting this change. We've talked with, with many of you, and um, I, I hope this isn't shocking to many of you because... Uh, it, it's just this rule needed to exist for a long time, but I was back and forth on it. Um, but really, it's just to be consistent with uh, this rule 10 automatic coin alignment XP farms are not allowed um, because uh, corn farms were really just an XP farm that were kind of uh, used through a backdoor method, kind of subverting the rules a little bit. So officially, you cannot have a farm uh, where with, with farmhands where the primary purpose is generating XP. And you may be thinking, well, what if I'm doing this for uh, food or whatever and I'm just cooking and I happen to be getting XP from that? Uh, <laughs> don't try to pull that. We It's it's pretty obvious um, when the intention is, uh, what the intention is behind any given farm. Um, this is really, you may be thinking, well, what can I use farmhands for? Well, you can use them as decoration in a build. You can use them as like for an aesthetic farm. Um, really, it's it's to be more lore friendly. I mean, you never read in in Lord of the Rings or the Silmarillion or the Hobbit about uh, underground corn farms being being a feature of Middle Earth. Um, farms should be a little more uh, practical, a little more realistic, um, and that's how you should interpret this rule. So, if if there's a, a farm that you're using for for food, it doesn't need to be hooked up to a tire furnace system, or uh, you have tons of farmers and you have an entire like water stream system and it's underground and it's all hidden away but it's all totally automatic that's just that's specifically what this rule is targeting you can still use farm hands but there is limitations to how you should be using them again i hope you understand that this change is not to target anyone in specific in particular um this is a change to really balance the server and make it more lore friendly and more consistent with the rules that it already has um, in addition, though, once uh, once this rule goes into effect and uh, after this video, the rule will be implemented and you will have about a week to kind of deconstruct your farm hands. After that, we will start um, removing any farms that we find. We will not be punishing players with farms, but we will be uh, removing the farms without warning or compensation to players. So you have a week to uh, get what you want out of these farms or to not to get what you want. You, you got to stop using them for XP, but you can deconstruct them, get your materials back. After that, we will be uh, just deleting them, basically. So don't get upset when that happens. But in compensation, uh, once this goes into effect, we will be increasing the AFK cooldown timer um, to be a little bit longer because no longer will we have a lot of players trying to AFK farm for XP. So I hope you guys appreciate that change. Um, and, and like I said, a lot of you have been expecting this. We've talked to a lot of you about this. So, all right, now let's talk about war rules. So let's go down here. So war rules have totally changed. Basically, um, we're going to read through this together, and then you can uh, read the rest of this by yourself. Um, but I'm going to most of this is going to be talking about uh, the intention behind changing these rules. Um, but let's just kind of read this together, and we'll talk about some of these changes. So, wars are player-organized events where two or more factions participate in large-scale PvP, usually involving a siege build where one side tries to infiltrate and eliminate the other. 
So this is different than how it used to be where uh, if you wanted to do a war, you needed to talk to a staff member, you needed them to officiate the war book. Now staff will no longer be involved as staff in the wars. They can still participate in wars as players, but as staff, this is no longer a uh, staff-run event. So staff do not organize or enforce war rules. It is entirely up to the players to maintain order within rule wars. Players cannot seek staff assistant in man assistance in managing wars unless a general rule has been broken, such as hacking or exploiting. So if you decide you want to do a war with another player, it's up to you and that other player or that other faction or whatever to figure out what your what your rules are going to be and how you're going to force them and, and what style you want to do it in. So this does two things. One, uh, it means the responsibility to have a fun war is on you now. Staff will not be fixing wars for you, and if you feel like something's not fair, uh, it's it's your fault, basically. <laughs> uh, but this also gives you more freedom with how you want to do wars. Now you're no longer constricted, as you'll see uh, later, that you're no longer constricted to the official uh, rules and, and those um stipulations so you can do a, a war if you wanted you could do a war where you could uh, blow up bases i don't suggest doing that 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 would be kind of uh not fun but uh that is the freedom that you now have but again you cannot get staff's assistance if somebody breaks the war rules or things don't go according to plan it's now up to you and it's your responsibility so all facets of the wars, including gear, PvP, format, and rewards, are up to the players to decide. However, below you will find suggested ways to organize a, uh, a war. So uh, down here is, is ways that you can figure out how you want to do it. Um, but here's an important fact. Important uh, biomes slash lands cannot be transferred between factions. So you can transfer builds theoretically, but you cannot transfer, like, say, Mordor. You could not take the land of Mordor and say, oh, if I w lose this war, the land of Mordor now belongs to Gondor. That um, that just gets too messy. I know some servers do that, but here we're going to keep things consistent uh, with the lore of, of Lord of the Rings. Okay, I want to read this first one here for suggested ways to organize a war because this, is, this has an important point. Determine the factions and players that will be involved with a war. That's pretty obvious. Uh, but because wars are player-organized, one player faction uh, cannot force another player or faction to participate in a war. So... If you're trying to organize a war and you want a certain rule, uh, you cannot force the other player or faction to uh, agree to that rule. Basically, to engage in a war, it has to be a mutual agreement between both factions. Otherwise, uh, you're, if, if you're going to try to harass them into, into obeying what you want, it's, it's not going <laughs> to go well for you. That is breaking uh, the most important rule on the server, which is be respectful and don't harass. Okay, uh, with these war rule changes, we have this new uh, term called Organized PvP Encounters, or OPEs, or OPEs, however you want to call them. Um, so these are just what they seem like, Organized PV, uh, PvP Encounters, just, just that. Uh, organized times for players to participate in a stylized form of PvP. Okay, so I want you to read these rules, or these suggestions, over um, yourself. Again, so these are, from here on... Uh, is, is all suggestions on how you can organize a rule. Uh, a lot of these you'll see are very similar to um, what the war rules were originally, but now they're suggestions and not requirements in order to have a war. Uh, but it's very important, if you're going to do a war, just make sure that you think things through and, and you have open communication with your uh, fellow players. Really, you just want to have fun, right? A above everything, uh, you play on the server to have fun. So make sure that everyone's having the best fun that they can, even though things may get tense or whatever. Uh, make sure that you're, you're having fun because now the responsibility to have fun is on you. Now, there is another thing that I want to make clear is you could do an organized PvP encounter, an OPE, uh, by yourself or uh, without a war. You don't need to have a war to have an organized PvP encounter. So like I said, OPEs can happen outside of wars. They are player organized and player run. So if you wanted to do a siege or a ground battle or something similar uh, without starting an entire war, you can do that. You just got to contact the people in, that you want to be involved, uh, which will which will probably include the build of the owner, I would hope. Um, and then you can just set it up. It doesn't have to be a war situation in order to have uh, an OPE of any sort. So I hope that gives you a little more freedom uh, encourage you, encourages you to uh, view PvP as, as more of a fun mechanic and not something to uh, promote dominance over another person. 
Um, and again, it's the responsibility for these things are, are now on you, okay? Uh, staff are not going to micromanage your wars for you. Uh, if you have a question or if you want a suggestion from a staff member on uh, on what a good way to organize a war rule or what they would do or something like that, that's fine. But don't expect staff to uh, fix your wars for you or or to or uh, fix things or work things out when things go uh, go badly. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to stop rambling here for a little bit. Again, go read all of these by yourself um, and feel free to ask any questions that you may have. Uh, but I hope you guys understand kind of why we're making these changes. Really, it's to encourage wars to be less uh, less exhausting for both the staff and the players and more of a fun mechanic that you guys can participate in if you want. So I hope you guys understand. And uh, again, ask any questions if you have them. And I will end my ramble now. Thank you guys, and I'll see you later.